In this video, we're going to look at how to name the aldehydes. And the aldehydes are a class of compounds that contain the carbonyl functional group. Uh, and what specifically is the carbonyl functional group? Well, it's a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. And in the case of the aldehydes, that needs to be at the end of my molecule, the end of a carbon chain. So the key thing to know about naming aldehydes is that the suffix or the last part of the name is going to be anal. And for reference, let's include a table of our stem names that relates to the number of carbons in the longest carbon chain in my molecule. So to start with the simplest possible example, here we go. Uh, there's my carbonyl functional group. And because there's actually only one carbon in that molecule, it's automatically at the end of the chain. So it's definitely an aldehyde. And given that there's only one carbon in that chain, uh, the stem part of my name is going to be meth or meth. So if I write down that meth, I write down the suffix of the name, which is anal, and I have methanal. Second example, here we go. Again, I can see my carbonyl functional group. It's down at the end, in this case, down at the right-hand side of my molecule, but it's on the end of the chain, so it's definitely going to be an aldehyde. So let's count the number of carbons in my main chain. I've got one, two carbons, so the stem part of my name is going to be ethyl eth. So if I write that down and then add my suffix, I've got ethanol. And you'll notice, unlike uh, some naming conventions, we don't need to put any numbers for aldehyde. Why don't we put any numbers? Well, given that my carbonyl functional group is always at the end of the chain, it's always going to be on the first carbon. So technically, it would always be ethan one al or ethan two al, and so on. So because it's always going to be on that first carbon, we actually don't need to write any numbers for them. So we've got a third example. Here we go, I've drawn it the other way around. So my carbonyl functional group is on the left-hand side. It doesn't matter, that's still gonna be labeled as my first carbon. Uh, so how many carbons have I got this time? One, two, three, four carbons. That means the stem part of my name is going to be butte. So again, I'm gonna write that stem name and now on the end, and I've got butanal. Fourth example, okay, we've got something slightly different here. Let's uh, first of all find my longest carbon chain, which should include my functional group. So if I start there, there's carbon one, two, three. I could also label that carbon number three, that's still three carbons in a row, but let's keep it simple for now and choose those three in a straight line. So because there's three carbons in my main chain, this stem part of the name is going to be prop. So I can write that down. Again, the suffix, the end of the name, is going to be anal. And then what's the extra bit we need to take into account here? Well, on the second carbon, let's just label those carbons so we're absolutely clear. On my second carbon, I've got a methyl functional group uh, sticking off the side. So to add detail to my name, I'm going to have to put two methyl propanal. And that takes into account my substituent group there, the methyl as well. Final example, a little bit more complicated. What have I got here? Well, in this case, I've got two carbonyl functional groups. They're both on the either end of my carbon chain, so we're definitely still talking about an aldehyde. So what do we need to do then? Well, let's count the number of carbons I've got. I've got two carbons, which is going to relate to the stem name ETH. So if I write ETH, technically, if there was only one group, I would have ETH or F and L. In this case, because there's two of those aldehyde functional groups or carbonyl functional groups, I'm going to need to just indicate uh, that there are two of them. So I can call this ethan di al. And that di simply means that there's two of that functional group in my molecule. I don't need to put ethan 1, 2 di al because they can only be at the end of the chain. Therefore, if I know from the eth part that there are two carbons, there must be one carbonyl on each of them. And that's pretty much it for aldehydes. Hopefully the video was of some help.